I didn't grow up with any of you, but I know you. You're just like all the women and men I grew up with, particularly at that time, it was men in Scranton and Claymont. Places where the neighborhood I lived in, you became a cop, a firefighter, or a priest. I wasn't qualified for any of them, so here I am. But look, all kidding aside, I got to know you. You're the same ones after a ball game in a visiting field. Come walking out of the gym if you want, and you may get jumped by the other team or their, their supporters. You may be all by yourself, the only one standing there when you watch six people jump one of our teammates. What the hell would you do? You jump in. You jump in knowing you're going to get the hell beat out of you, too. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the ground. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back for fruit. Fruit is for the own team. For when it's a shame. For swing, two, three, three girls at the old ball game. Nelly Kelly, the baseball game. Knew the players, knew all their names. You could see her there every day. Shout hooray when they play. Her boyfriend by the name of Joe said to Coney I'll dear we'll go. Then Nelly started to fret and pout. And to him I heard her shout, Hey, take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. Cause it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball one which he complains about not getting chosen for the basketball team. Remember, for those whose names are never called when choosing a... I would have written about that, except she done it first. Because when you're five foot two, okay, five one and a half, and everybody else in the whole gym class is five foot three and even taller, it hurts. Truth is, I hadn't thought about that for years. And then a recent phone call rekindled all those fears. A softball game, Robin said, and you're invited. Softball, great, that's my game. Why, softball's practically my middle name. I'll be right over, I said, sounding excited. Even though I can't throw, I can't hit, I can't run, I admit. I can't catch, I can't pitch. In softball, I haven't found my niche. But I don't let details get in my way. Team sports, mm, that's what I loves to play. So I got dressed, I got my sneakers tied, made it to the park in time for choosing sides. Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. Pick me, 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 pick me. Glove? Yeah, I own one, but I, I didn't bring it because it's being repaired. But I can always borrow from the other team. Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. This part goes on for quite a while because 20 people showed up to play and they picked 10 to a side. As the ranks of the unchosen were depleted and the ranks of the chosen swelled and I was still standing there, I tried to act real casual. 
Looked down at the ground, looked up at the sky, noticed clouds were rolling in and a wind had kicked up off the river. A bad sign. And well, deja vu, I was the last one chosen. After the other team picked Jay Rosen. They put me in the field so far out and to the right. I was practically out of sight. But everybody said I had a real good day. I didn't make any errors. I didn't make any plays. You see, the ball never actually came out my way, and I figured the afternoon is going to end this way. Now, coming up to bat was a whole different kind of humbling experience. I took one swing and missed. That was no surprise. I took another swing and missed. That was no surprise. Then I practiced strategy. I let one go by. It was called a ball. I had a proud moment. It didn't last long, though, because the pitcher threw when I couldn't resist. I swung and I actually hit it. But it was a pathetic little dribbler, just right back to the boundary. The pitcher threw it over to first base, and again, I was out, but that was no surprise. But as I was walking to the bench to pick up my glove, the captain of the other team said to the captain of my team, hey, it's okay, she doesn't know how to play, so we won't count her outs. <laughs> and I, I turned around, I said, no, wait a minute, I want my outs to count. I want you to count my outs, which made me instantly unpopular with my whole team. So I said, oh, I get it, don't count my outs. That's good strategy too, and it makes me feel so special. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. I wish this wasn't all true, but it is. <laughs> well, eventually I resumed my place in the outfield and continued watching the dandelions grow and blossom and turn into puffs and blow away in the chilly wind. Watched the clouds above me making ugly formations in the sky. And it wasn't long before I began to question my worth as a human being and my reason for living. And then top of the seventh, two on, two out, a crack of the bat, a mighty clout. My whole team turned and cringed to see that speeding ball heading vaguely toward me. I ran as fast as I could. I said a prayer. I stuck out my glove. The ball landed in there. No one could believe it on either team. They, they hooped and hollered, they stomped and screamed, and even total strangers watching clapped and cheered, aware that God had performed a miracle here. I was carried to the bench, I was handed a beer, and then the clouds broke apart and the sun reappeared. Well, I'm exaggerating about the sun coming out, but it felt like it did in my heart, because I wanted to live again. By the way, we lost that game, 17 to 3. But I considered it a moral victory. And Janice, Ian, wherever you might be, take heart. There's hope for you, because there's hope for me. Happy Mary Ann McCann, a crazy baseball fan. Rooted hard for Dan Moran. Dan Moran, her baseball man. When he came to bat one day and saw her smile so gay, his Irish heart was thumping when he heard her yell hooray. She loudly cried, oh, Danny, mine. A hit, and Mary Ann is thine. The score was tied, the bases full, the crowd began to cheer. For Mary almost fainted when she heard these words so clear. Strike one, strike two, strike three, the batter's out. Then Dan heard Mary Ann in frenzy shout. If you can make a hit in a ball game, you can make a hit with me. But the man who can hit in a ball game can be my affinity. I'm simply baseball wild, though how I yell. Slam out a home run hit, I'll yell like ooh. If you can make a hit in a ball game, you can make a hit with me. 
to St. an Irish wake. Next man up was Joe McCoy, that heavy hitting boy. It hurt poor Dan when Mary shouted, that's the boy, oh joy. Joe, oh Joe, come show your foe how far that little ball can go. Everybody's on their feet and making lots of noise, while every eye was staring at that bat of Joe McCoy's. A crash, fair ball, a run, the game is won. Then Mary turned to Dan and loudly sung. Oh 